Valentine's Day, everyone. How are you all doing, huh? I thought I would just stop in today and do a little bit of um, what I call lightweight tutorial. It is just explaining the process I did something, and nothing bad, though. <laughs> but, um, you know, I know I've been asked to do um, tutorials, but there are so many awesome tutorials out there for a lot of things. And uh, the way I kind of process a, a project and work through it is so um, personal to the way my brain works. So I just want to explain it. So if it resonates with some of you, I will talk about um, mistakes I made or um, what made me want to do it. Well, as you saw at the beginning, hopefully G put that at the beginning, um, I drug out my hexes. I was part of a hexy group on social media in which we did a theme every week. Of course, after several weeks, I uh, fell off the wagon. Um, I, I uh, you know, I saw something shiny. <laughs> That's my only explanation. But I had all these hexes. Um, some were already made up into onto the background, and so I decided to make a small wall hanging. Um, I only have one place in my home where I can um, switch out a quilt, and that's in my entryway. And I thought, well, that'll be really cute just for like a summertime uh, wall hanging to hang up. And so I'm going to put it together in um, the size that it is now. But I had all of these other hexes already cut out and prepped. What to do? Well, I've always been fascinated. I was gifted this absolutely adorable... Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, hexy pincushion. You know, some people are just so darn talented. And um, and I love hexy. I, I love uh, English paper piecing. And one of the exciting things that happened this last week was the Patreon that I belong to, um, A.K. Uh, Van Accessible, Linda, uh, and I know I talked about Patreon before. There are so many, many um, awesome Patreons. Oop, let me just be sure to turn that off so it doesn't start going crazy. Um, but Linda's is the one that I'm doing this year. And um, sometimes I'll change out. It's a lot of work to um, manage a Patreon. And she does a amazing job. Um, every week you're getting some information on something creative to do. Uh, the flip side of that too, which is really um, kind of like a number one for me, is I've made so many friends on that, on the Zoom chats that she sets up. So just even getting together uh, on a Zoom and working on whatever you want or working on the project that she has designated for the week, it it makes the world smaller and I, I love that and I feel like uh, on that Zoom that there are people that I'm connecting with in um, a more personal way, if I can say that. So, this last week um, she was going to do something with Hexies. <laughs> And I was like, okay, I, I love everything about it, so let's see what's, what are we going to do. And she taught us how to um, make a, a hexy pin cushion. I needed that step-by-step -step tutorial. I am such a visual learner. Um, Reading uh, something is much more challenging, which is kind of interesting because I love to read. But when it comes to instructions, there is a, a piece of it that I really do much better if I have a visual. So being on the Zoom for this hexy pincushion and um, 
you know, the whole group was there, uh, including a Lori textilist, um, and she was really, she totally got the instructions. I took one of the hexes that, uh, hexy flowers that I had made up, and I created a pin cushion out of it. And so here it is. Now, you could put a button and put a button through like that it would be really cute. But since my middle hexi there had words on it, um, fall day, I, I didn't want to put the button. But I think on the next one I will. I was surprised. I was surprised how I was able to finish this and was so proud of myself. But um, it was because I was on there getting mentored in real time. Stitch this side to this side, and I'd hold it up to the camera. What side next? What side next? So I'm quite proud of myself. I'm going to make many more of these. As you would uh, anticipate for me, getting the hexes out then caused a whole nother brainstorm. And I said, what else could I do um, with my hexes? And I made a needle book. So here's the step-by-step -step of the needle book and what I would do differently next time. So I took, this is the hexi already sewn on the background. And so I took that hexi and with the same fabric, I sewed it all the way around, right sides together, and then turned it inside out, and then slip stitched this close right here. What I would do differently is I would make sure that this was on the bottom. Um, I didn't even think about that. The other thing I would do is before I flipped it uh, right side out, I would have put a ribbon because on, on this edge and this edge so it could be tied shut. So if you choose to create something like this, um, either put snaps or a ribbon to tie your needle book closed. So this is my needle book. I cut uh, two felt squares and then I seamed it down the center um, of the background fabric, not all the way through, just the background fabric. So I had right sides together of the fabric and then on the outside of the inside fabric I had two, two of these squares that were already seamed down. So then there, there would be no seam down the center of the outside. Once I did that, then I created a pocket by sewing just a little square onto one of these sheets for a little pair of scissors and for a needle threader. And then I have several, uh, you know, I have two or three sheets that I could just put needles into. So this is a quick way to make a needle book for yourself or as a gift. You can put a little label in there. You can put a needle minder. You can put a little tassel and some charm. Uh, you can decorate it all up. But I think I'm going to, the next time, really think that through because I have a lot of uh, hexi flowers and put that ribbon I'm also am going to check out what the, the snap situation might be. Um, but it's kind of a neat, it's a, almost like a little clutch purse or wallet size. And it's cute. And it's another way to use your hexi flowers and to carry your scissors and your needle threader. So that's my tip for the day. I love English paper piecing. It's uh, and I use a silk thread because it just melts into the fabric. You don't even see your stitching. The other, um, there's so many things I want to share with you. Oh, I ordered those scissors off of um, Amazon, and they came in a box like this with a pack of 
um, 18, 18 little scissors in there so I could make gifts and the things. Um, but they, uh, it's called an 18 piece mini scissor with cover. Yeah, it came in a really thin little box. Here's the, here's the, our next, our next gathering is going to be strawberry making. That's with Van Accessible. And she sent the pattern out. I'll have to see if I'm able to do that because um, we have a construction still going on. <laughs> As you might hear in the background, um, our kitchen uh, was finished. The painting was finished, and it and we are both tickled beyond belief at how much we like it and how it brightened up that whole room. I know that I was going to uh, keep a journal, uh, keep track. I don't know why I thought I could do that. I um. I've I've tried calendar type things. I I just it, it, it's I have to accept that it's not me. But I do want to keep one journal that has no agenda, no agenda, and. It's because I found some journal pages. I found some journal pages that G and I wrote when our oldest son was a baby. And um, I didn't keep that journal up, but I tore the pages out that we did write, and they were so wonderful. And then um, I found some journal pages that my mother wrote, and uh, of thoughts. She just was writing some thoughts down, and it just really touched me and made me, um, I mean, it was a, a little bit of a visit from her. So I thought I would go ahead and do that uh, type of just no set schedule. Um, just when, it, when I get moved to write something down, I'll write something down. And I thought I would keep it in this, uh, I found this <laughs> leather journal. <laughs> and it had, it's so interesting because it, nothing had been written in, in it. And it had some old pictures. Um, you know, here's an old picture of my dad and his sister when he was four years old. That was in New York City. Um, and then I found this old newspaper item that was cut out. His mother must have cut this out, and then he must have saved it. But it's an old newspaper picture of my dad at the... the this was at the... Um, let's see... It might have been at the Buffalo Zoo or in New York City. I'm not sure. But his nickname was Buster. Buster Jones. Well, he was called Buzzy a lot when he was a kid, too. Because he was hyper, just like the rest of us. And here he is standing there at the zoo looking at a polar bear. And I thought, oh, I, I would like to um, create... Uh, a beautiful page uh, commemorating that. So I think that is what I will do. I will get down to one one journal that has no dates on it, so that I they, it looks like there's a lot of empty dates. Don't you hate that when you are wanting to like keep a, a, you know keep a schedule and and then you life gets in the way and you get busy and then suddenly you remember oh i was supposed to keep a schedule and and then there's all these empty dates and they make you feel like a loser yeah i i don't want to do that anymore i am totally over that my um sister and i are going to be having a sister weekend it's going to be 
fantastic. We haven't had one in, I can't even remember the last time we had one, but I'm so looking forward to it. And it is going to require me to travel. And with that, um, I would, I'm not going to show you, but if you could see this room, it, it's like a bomb went off in it because I not only, uh, got all hexied, um, that sounds like a curse, doesn't it? I got all hexied, and I then started thinking about um, a project to take something that my sister's not a crafter, and um, she has many talents, but uh, crafting is not one of them. And but I have to have crafting with me, and knowing that she's going to keep us busy, 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 she is. Um, already got many things planned. Um, so I decided I needed to take a project with me, but it has to be something that not only is going to keep my interest, but isn't going to challenge me um, by distraction. And that means nothing that requires counting, because um, I don't know what the lighting will be like. I don't uh, I know that she's going to keep us going and busy, and we want to spend a lot of time together. So the projects I want to take are ones that um, require little thinking. Yeah, little thinking. And, and then I suddenly decided I had to do a Kathy Schmitz. Um, I had to do those stuffed animals. I could not get them out of my mind because when she showed that whole bowl of all the little forest animals sitting together in the bowl, it spoke to me. Then I thought, well, I'm going to choose two um, to commemorate, start commemorating because I you know I don't know about you but um, I'm thinking about what time of year spring is coming what's the next holiday all of that uh, that inspires us crafters and I decided to do this couple I don't have him but it's embroidery so that means that basic stitches, um, I know all the stitches, um, and I wanted to do Ruth and her boyfriend, because it's like G and I, I wanted to start with a couple and um, start working on those. So I want to give you a heads up. You're going to want to do these. They are absolutely adorable. I mean, if you go on to Kathy Schmidt's Instagram site and go to specifically the where she posted them in a bowl and music is playing, you got to have them. You got to have them. So I got them out and I was reading the instructions and it said she used Moda Crackle linen. You don't have to. You could use any. But I had in my brain that I had a lot of Moda Crackle somewhere. Hence the disaster that occurred here because I was dragging fabric, piles of fabric out looking for it. And then I stood in the center of the room as I don't know if you do this or not, but you're trying to track back through your life all the way to when you last saw something. So I was standing there going, Moda Crackle, I know that I have yardage of that because I absolutely loved it. And so I remembered that I actually have a project box filled with uh, Kathy Schmidt embroidery that I had started and the motor crackle was in there. So I got it out and I started cutting it up. Now I want to, for those of you who are going to venture into this forest animals, I want to give you some tips because she has very specific instructions on how to do this. And I'm not kidding you, 
I did read. I did read the instructions. In fact, I had to read them five or six times for it to sink in what she was talking about. The instructions are very clear. It's just that I'm not used to reading instructions. And, and so it was quite frightening. You know, in fact, I wasn't sure what was going on when I was reading them. But I read the instructions. And then I had to walk my own path a little bit. So for me, when I do embroidery, I like to um, put SF101, it's a Pellon product, on the back of my project. And that being because I do a lot of carrying <laughs> the thread and, and then for tension, um, and I don't want it to show through the front. And if I put the SF101 on the back of the fabric, then I can um, do a little bit more of that jury rigging of my embroidery. <laughs> but w what I did first was she gives, this is the most amazing pattern. I am not kidding you. It is amazing because I thought I was going to have to be tracing all of this. But when I actually opened it up, the pattern is on a specially printed piece of paper that you iron on to the fabric. And in each pattern there is a test piece so that you can see how it irons on. And she says in the pattern you need a hot, dry iron. Okay, so I had to read that ten times because I'm used to steaming the bejeebies out of everything. And so I had to chant, dry iron, dry iron, dry iron. And then there's a little design that is a test piece to see how it um, prints onto your fabric. And the test piece is adorable. So the first thing I did was I put the SF-101 on the back of my cotton fabric because I wanted to see if the test piece would print with the SF-101 on the back. And it did. Look at that little sweet thing. So the test piece can be a little, you know, pin cushion, uh, whatever you want it to be. So once I knew that it um, would print onto the crackle fabric, which is a cotton, it's 100% cotton, with the SF-101 on the back, I was good to go. What I can tell you is that when you go to iron your pattern on, it's just a piece, it's like newsprint paper, and it has the uh, one time, it's a one time use of, um, let me, in fact, let me get it here. Um, hold on one second. Back, back. So I wanted to show you that um, the pattern, see like this, here's what the front looks like. But this is on newspaper print and it's already, it's printed with a special kind of ink that is a one-time print, so you can use it one time to print onto your fabric, which is all you need. And to not have to trace, I mean, sometimes I like to trace, sometimes I don't want to trace. And I thought this was genius, one-time use. What I can tell you and what I learned with the test pieces, here are two more test pieces that came with the pattern is when you go to press this onto fabric, you have to use a dry iron. You press the fabric first to get it warmed up. You lay this on the fabric, and then you press down with heat, and you don't move the iron around. Um, 
because right here, I don't know if you can see it, I moved the iron around, and so it spread that ink just a little bit over here. You see that? So you want to press directly. Look at that pocket watch. I just, I'm, I can't wait to stitch these little things. Um, you want to press up and down. So when I did press up and down, I would slowly lift it up to see if I had gotten the paper hot enough to imprint onto the fabric. And now my piece, I mean, it cuts down on so much work because all I did was press the fabric, press the paper onto the fabric, and the whole thing is ready to stitch and embroider. I'm very excited to take this project. <clears throat> It'll be the, so, oh, <laughs> And it's quite clever. She is quite clever. So the back side, like if you look at her, Ruth, it's a three-dimensionally stuffed item. So the back is embroidered too. Her back hiney. Yes. But how do you stuff it? So on the back piece, and this is all in the instructions. I'm just kind of giving you a heads up. If you're like me, I, would, I read them three times. Um, so on the back side, you cut the seam and you reseam it. And for about a two inch space here, you're just using a basting stitch. So this is what it looks like on the inside. Then when you lay your piece down, you lay the pattern down where there is a seam right across where it's going to be opened up to stuff. She really thought of everything. And because, <laughs> because she knows there's people like me out there, I'm sure she has seen it all, I saw it in big bold letters to, I mean, the instructions are, they are very clear and very precise. But this is the very, very important part when stitching the embroidery that you do not stitch over the basting section of the seam. <laughs> and I kind of sat there and I went, what does that mean? Oh, because you're going to, you're going to rip that open to stuff it. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. Uh, it it might have actually, she might have originally said Anna. It's a very, very important that you know not to stitch over the basting section. I'm very excited to, to ha take this project because I can see where um, uh, this would be an easy one to stitch, no brainer. Um, you know, everything is marked on there. It's basic stitches. In fact, I kind of played with the, oh, what do they do with it? <laughs> there was actually a section that was, um, oh, here it is, uh, of instructions on that sheet. And so I said, I wonder if they, if they, look at that. I printed them, uh, all the stitches, I printed it on a piece of fabric. Yeah. So I'm taking my Yazzie bag. This is uh, that I embellished with a buttermilk basin um, motif. And I'm packing all of this plus the, the needle book, the thread, and I'm going to be set for one project that I'm going to power so while I'm with my sister because I cannot sit and watch TV, although I'm hoping to spend a lot of time in the pool. Yeah. So what next? Just, I know that um, if you are in the uh, northern, western part of Oregon, I know what Pioneer Quilts, which is one of my favorite quilt shops. Um, we're going to, she, Linda has said she's going to be starting a wool stitch day. 
And so I think the first one will be like March 15th, and I am definitely going to be there for that. I, I need some wool stitcher friends, and um, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that, and that's a Pioneer Quilts on March 15th. And if you go onto their website, you'll be able to see a um, calendar. That's what I was trying to say. A calendar, something that organizes you. Yes. Everything's going along great here. We're just moving along. Um, I went to C's Candy yesterday and bought G and I our Valentine's candy. We don't do a big Valentine's thing, but we both like candy. <laughs> so um, it was so funny how crowded it was yesterday with every all these guys buying these heart-shaped boxes of candy. You know, G and I want a specific kind, and um, so I got our, our, our C's candy for today, and um, other than that, I'm going to pick out a good movie to watch tonight, and I'm not sure what he's cooking for dinner, but I bet you it's something good. Well, thank you. Thank you for stopping by. If you feel so inclined, please subscribe and click that bell and it will tell you the next time I upload a video. Other than that, I am going to keep on quilting. Talk to you later. Love you guys. Mm -hmm.